then already. I feel welcomed back. I hope you do too. Welcome back to More Up North. I'm Shannon Moore. I just have to tell you that this week I found a gray hair. I did. <laughs> I did. It was like right up here, and I'm pretty sure it was, you know, a direct result from the Supreme Court decision. However, I was feeling a little insecure about not only the decision, but also the gray hair, so I invited this panel. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better already. I feel better. <laughs> it's fabulous. Um, Steve Heimel is back and better than ever. 29-year-old veteran, Alaskan broadcaster, and on his Sunday Americana music show, The Truck Stop, he is known as the Old Bull Rider, which I like to refer to him at other times as well. Welcome, Steve. Uh, good to be here. I, I have to say, I have to say, I'm a little bit older than 29 years old. Well, you've been in Alaska 29 years, right? <laughs> yeah. You were doing radio before then. Oh, yeah. Like when you cranked it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. You always add something special. Uh, Bob Poe is here, and he's a candidate for the Democratic nomination of Governor of Alaska. First question, will you quit? <laughs> uh, and he has a 29-year career in both the Alaska private and public sectors. So thanks for being here. Thank you. And Tom Brennan is the author of four books, including a thriller about Alaska seceding from the Union. <laughs> yes. Um, Tom, Tom was an editorial writer for The Voice of the Times and now writes a weekly online column for the Anchorage Daily Planet.com. So thank you so much for being here. Did we get that right? Yes, that's we right. We got all that right. So everybody's all dapper and ready to go. Um, there's so many um, issues that happen in Washington that are, you know, I don't know, what is it, 29,000 miles away, wherever it is, um, that don't seem to affect us and we don't really, I mean, that's why we live here, frankly, so we don't have to pay attention to a lot of things that happen uh, in the United States. I'm talking secession talk for you. <laughs> thought you'd like that. Um, but, but then there are other decisions that happen, and I think oftentimes we're so insulated in Alaska that we don't pay attention to them until they're like, you know, driving right up the tailpipe, and you're like, well, what's that noise thumping? Oh, oh yeah, that's right, I didn't pay attention. And so last week in a 5-4 de decision, uh, Citizens United versus Federal Election Commissions, uh, there was a decision made basically that says that corporations are allowed now under the freedom of speech clause or amendment in our Constitution that they are allowed to spend freely for or against any candidates. Now we've had election laws for a long time or campaign finance laws. This is something entirely different. Those laws are basically null and void because now a corporation can just go buy ads. They can say, I don't like Bob Poe, I think he's not my guy, and they can go write whatever ads they want and run them against you, and it doesn't count as any sort of campaign finance or anything. It's called now freedom of speech. And in Alaska, we, we've sort of been colonized in a certain respect by different industry as time's gone on, and people have come in and purchased legislators and we all know a few that have gone to jail and <laughs> met new boyfriends or whatever they've done there I don't know but all I can say is they earned it if they sold their vote so um, I, I think that we need to talk about to, and I wanted to get your opinions on this certainly yours Bob because you're running and this is definitely changing the game um, how this is going to affect Alaska and our Alaska campaigns Steve Heimel what do you think mister you know I think uh, when you the first time I was really aware of the, the way that outside money can come into Alaska and really make a difference politically was the predator control ballot measure. And it's been, so far it's been largely on the ballot measures. Um, the, the way that this decision works, it allows the groups to have unlimited spending and to spend, so long as they're not spending directly they're giving money to the candidate. They can, they can do things on the candidate's behalf. And it's happened so far in Alaska on issues. We really saw it with the Pebble Mine campaign. We didn't know who was behind either one of these groups. I mean, we sort of did. But I mean, this was like huge, flagrant, insane amounts of money being spent in Alaska. Now, as a 29-year veteran of Alaska broadcasting, this is nothing but good for my industry. <laughs> <laughs> Not yours exactly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, I think it's really bad for our politics. Problem is, what are we going to do about it? 
Well, that, that is a problem. And I don't think everyone sees it as such. I mean, but you could, if you were, if you thought that those, you know, greeny weeny, uh, wolf worshiping, granola munching, alfalfa sprite growing, hippies down in the South, down in America, <laughs> could, um, could come up here and buy advertisement to say that we can't shoot our wolves out of our planes by God, well, then you should be against this. And if you think that, you yeah. know, the, you know, the Alaska Outdoor Council or the trophy <coughs> big clubs in the lower 48 couldn't come up. I mean, legally, so far, all that this has really been able, to, all that this has happened was during ballot initiatives. But this is now going broad scale. So Bob Poe, what do you feel about this? I mean, you're running for office and now all of a sudden you're like, you're 25, could I have $25? Could you be part of the I Know Bob Poe Club? Can I, <laughs> can, you know, can we do a fundraiser? Can you make your famous meatballs at my fundraiser? These sort of conversations that you're having with everyday Americans, or Alaskans, if you can call us everyday anything, um, all, really all you need to do is go find a nice cozy corporation and they can run well, some ads for you. <laughs> I think there's two things you really want to think about. How did uh, campaign finance law get affected by this? And the second is um, this whole idea of corporations having the First Amendment right, this corporate personhood stuff. So the first thing is, what's it affecting us? Well, a corporation might be able to give $500 to a candidate, but that's it. It really comes to this independent expenditure area where they could now, just like, say, Bob Gillum personally financed independent expenditures to oppose the Pebble Mine, now a corporation could do that. Now, the fact is, there are only so many Bob Gillums and you know, wealthy people well, in Alaska. Well, there's one. Right. There's really just Bob Gillum. Really and and as, as I, I know Bob Gillum, yep. I like Bob Gillum, yep. I like the way he thinks about Pebble Mine. Yep. But even Bob Gillum doesn't have as much money. Right, right. And, and there's as a, Northern and, Dynasty. It, and there are a lot more corporations that would logically have more money to spend. Right. But, but also, when you think about predator control, 527 groups have been coming up here for some time now. In fact, when I thought I was running against Sarah Palin, every political consultant in the world was calling me because they thought all this 527 money would be clashing against Sarah Palin. So that already exists and there are all sorts of ways to sort of not be honest about who's who's contributing so I think the big question is this corporate personhood thing do corporations really have the right to freedom of speech I mean are they really people like you and me and if you think about Alaska for a minute the whole reason we became a state was to get out of corporation control we felt that often it was Seattle companies that went to Washington DC told them what people should think, and Alaskans were often the victim of that. So one of the things that statehood gave us was independence from that. And you brought up the VICO experience most recently. Uh, that's shown how corrupting corporation kind of influence can be. But here's the biggest concern I have. It's not just how it finances a campaign, because they've got to be independent. That's critical. If they get too aligned with your campaign, then they're no longer an independent expenditure. But it's the threat. Governor, you really need to take this position on this bill or this issue or we're going to run a campaign against you. We're going to run an independent expenditure campaign against you. That's the, it's the threat. And see, that conversation can happen very quietly. And as Alaskans, we never get to know that. Well, or in the case of this week, we did get to know that with uh, Dr. Cohen, who was appointed to a board. To, uh, the first time that we've had this board, he was appointed to a board to oversee wastewater out of that's coming out of the side of cruise ships and the cruise ship companies didn't want him to be one of 11 people on that board and they leaned on Commissioner Hardig and he phoned Dr. Cohen and said you know and he's been he was actually honest with one of the senators and saying yeah the cruise ship industry didn't want him on there that's already it's already yeah. happening it's been happening here for a long time so I, I want to ask you Tom in, in, you've been in Alaska a long time. How much do you think corporations have had an effect on our elections? Uh, not as much as I wish they, they did. They, the inclination of most of the companies in Alaska is to keep their head down and, and not get involved in that sort of stuff. Uh, even you mentioned, you mentioned Northern Dynasty, and uh, you know, Northern Dynasty, they, they let that Pebble Project uh, get beaten practically to death 
with bu by Bob Gillum's money, and they hardly, you know, they had a very weak, very low-level response. Uh, really, because you know, they, they outspent the them about, I think, three or four dollars to one. Northern, Northern Dynasty? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know where the hell the spots were, because I never saw them. The ones oh, I, they were, the, they the, were pretty the, much, actually, you know, the ones that I remember the most, Tom, were the ones with Sarah Palin's official governor photograph in entire pages of the Anchorage Daily News that said, I'm voting no on four. Um, she became a spokesperson, and they did run that, and they ran it everywhere. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, I was thinking of the TV 